Eric's Guitar Amplifier Repair in California. My name is Eric. One of the most popular amplifiers to come in for preservation and repair is the Fender Twin Reverb between the years 1960 through 1970. In the next video series, we will take a look at three Fender Twin Reverbs. Each amplifier will have its own dedicated video. Let's begin. Here we'll take a look at three of the amplifiers that we will be repairing. We have uh, amplifiers from 1967 through 1975. Here we're looking at a 1968 in mint condition, a really amazing amplifier. I was thrilled to get this in. Here we're looking at a 1975 fairly beat up. And again, the 1968 Fender Twin. Here's a close up view with the front uh, chassis. Fantastic, just really incredible condition. The uh, speaker grill as well. We're going to start with the 1975. Fender Twin. Let's begin. Here we're looking at the enclosure. Uh, heavy damage, heavy wear. Speaker grill is in pretty good shape for having such uh, heavy wear. I really love these heavily used touring amplifiers. Uh, they create really great sound because the transformers are all settled in and beat up and they're just fantastic to work on. This is a, a back view of the cabinet. Again, heavy wear. Big crack, big split there at the uh, cabinet upper center quadrant. Here's a closer view. Pretty tore up, but again, I really love these uh, amplifiers. A lot of fun to work on. We have the original speakers. Good condition, nicely worn in, so it should produce a really great sound. Here's the other view of the speaker. Here's a view of the uh, tube chart, view of the tube chart. Here's the reverb enclosure, pretty dirty inside there, and then a front view of the chassis, all dirty, but we'll clean that all up, and back view of the chassis. And now we're going to go ahead and test the output tubes. I always test tubes before I apply power to any of the amplifiers. This is an important step. And here we're just waiting for the filament to warm up. It takes a little bit longer to test the output tubes. They need a more time for the filament to warm up. And here we are ready to do the test. And testing strong, testing very strong in fact. I really like these tubes. These are the Svetlana 6L6s, they're great. And now we're ready to test the preamp tubes. This one failed, and uh, you'll see a flash when I put it in the socket. And there's the flash. And that's uh, not a great sign. It's probably going to test low, and it's time most likely to replace this preamp. Again, letting the filament warm up. And sure enough, we're testing low, so we'll replace this preamp tube. This is a 12AX7. So here we are replacing the first V1 preamp tube with a brand new JJ 12AX7.
And this is a 12A T7, and I chose to replace that preamp tube as well. It was giving me a short during the electron tube test, so we replaced that with a brand new JJ 12A T7. Here's a visual of the circuit board. You can see that we have the original coupling capacitors and electrolytic capacitors. It's time to replace both the coupling capacitors and the electrolytic capacitors. Um, I really dislike these blue caps. So the many technicians also have a tendency to replace these. They're not the best. Here we can see work done by a former technician. Uh, fine work. I really don't like these metal oxide capacitors. Um, but it's fine. It, it changes the sound a little bit, makes the sound a little bit more gritty. And here we are cleaning out the potentiometers with deoxid. And we'll do that to all the potentiometers. This is part of the procedure for uh, surfacing an amplifier. So these are the coupling capacitors after the phase inverter. I'm going to replace these with a paper and oil military capacitor. Uh, the purpose for me in repairing and creating and building amplifiers is that the amplifier should sound and sing like the human voice. Um, so one of the ways to do that is by replacing certain capacitors with a paper and oil type. So we'll do that now. And here's a view of all of the replaced capacitors. I like the uh, Sprague and Atom electrolytics. And uh, we're going to take a look at a circuit wiring that I didn't like, so I'm going to replace that section of the circuit with the AB763. The AB763 is designed by Fender. Uh, many musicians and collectors really like this circuit. I like it as well, so we will replace um, that circuit with the proper wiring. Here's the view of the uh, newly wired uh, circuit to the AB763 circuit design and you can of course see the paper and oil coupling capacitors. This will really help the amplifier sing. And here we're looking at all of the electron tubes top side view of the chassis. All the preamp tubes uh, they'll have their covers on. And we 
we're just showing the, the new tubes that were replaced. That's the failed tube that we replaced. Here I'm going to show you what I like to do. I like to um, take a toothbrush with the oxid and just clean off the pins of the preamp tubes. Give a little scrub there. It's just a technique that I like to use. And here's a view of the preamp tubes all cleaned up. A little bit of Windex. Makes everything look nice and helps the preamp tube function properly. And here we are cleaning out the tube sockets. This is deoxid. And all amplifiers get this as part of their general service. This is the method that I like to use for cleaning out the output tube sockets. I take this brush, give it some deoxid, and then I go ahead and scrub each one of the socket pins. Here's a view of the top chassis with all of the electron tubes cleaned. That blue tape is just indicating that the electron tubes passed. And now it's time to do a visual on the filter pack. we can see that the filter pack has been replaced by a former technician, the Sprague and Adam. I love these capacitors. Uh, great job by the former technician. Next part of the procedure is biasing the tubes. And we're looking for a negative voltage of 52 volts direct current. 52 volts. This is a top view of the front chassis, cleaned and uncleaned, just giving a, an example of one side cleaned and the other side not cleaned. And then we'll continue cleaning the whole front of the chassis. And here's the amplifier assembled and ready for the sine wave test. This is uh, the cleaned up front chassis. And now we're gonna look at the sine wave and it looks fantastic. Look how clean that is and really stable. So everything looks fantastic. And now we can alert the customer for pickup. Eric's Guitar Amplifier Repair, helping musicians to perform better. <laughs>